Hey my comic book people, happy new years. So today's video is all about these books, artists, writers that I enjoy in 2023. Uh, 2024 is now here. So we're gonna take a look back on some of my favorite artists, some of my favorite writers, and some of my favorite books. Now, when it comes to the writers and the artists, I do not have like, I have a top 10-ish and some honorable mentions, but they're not in order. So it's not like if I have somebody at one, they're the best artists to me, no. These are some of the artists that I enjoy when I'm reading them, some of the writers I enjoy reading them, some of the books I enjoy uh, reading as well. And 99.9% .9 of these books are in my pull list and my LCS. So I'm gonna go over this list. I got this list here because I couldn't remember everything. Um, also, if I butcher these names, I'm sorry uh, in advance. I'm horrible, horrible, horrible with names. Um, so I do apologize ahead of time. But we're gonna go through this list um, and then we'll talk about um, why some of these artists are where they are. And we'll do the artist one. Then part two will be writers. And then part three and final will be the books I, that I enjoyed in 2023. Okay? Now, with the books though, that might be in order of my least favorite, my least of my favorites to the most favorite book I've read in 2023. Okay? So let's get started with this list. We're gonna start off with the honorable mentions. Of course, we're gonna start with those first. Uh, the first one is Ed McGinnis uh, for Amazing Spider-Man. The reason why I got him in my honorable mentions, he wasn't like the long time or long term artist for that book. So, but I still enjoy his artwork and Amazing Spider-Man. Um, nothing against uh, uh, JRJR. It just, it, I just prefer Ed McGinnis artwork over his. So I have Ed McGinnis as my, um, in one of my honorable mentions. Uh, I just love the way he draws Spider-Man. I've always have. I just love his artwork, period. Uh, I've been a fan of his for years. And when he drew Amazing Spider-Man, it was it was great. Um, the artwork was amazing. Uh, Nicholas Draper Ivy is the next one uh, on my list. Uh, Nicholas, uh, he draws uh, Static Shadows of Dakota. Now, keep in mind, at first, I was like, I wasn't really feeling his artwork. But then as the book, when that, you know, several issues later, I started feeling it better. Uh, I, I started, it started uh, really, uh, you know, got a hold of me, and I and I, I started liking it. Um, it's it's not like your hard lines, and it's not like you know, uh, super detailed, but it, it works for the story. And I really enjoy uh, reading this book, and the art really kept me, uh, and it kept me uh, wanting to know more about the book. So, uh, Nicholas Draper Ivy uh, from Static Static Shadows of Dakota um, did a great job. And I almost keep saying Static Shock, but I know it's not Static Shock, I know it's just Static. But yeah, I, the artwork on that is very well done. Uh, Sam Lothfi, Lof, Lothfi? They say I'm horrible with names. Uh, he drew Mosley. Uh, Mosley came out earlier this year and that was phenomenal. The artwork, it just, I felt the emotion in the artwork. Um, the reason why he's not in my top 10, like I said, there's other books that did the same thing a little bit better, uh, but I still really enjoyed it, from, this book from beginning to end. I love the storyline uh, based, um, based on this book. It was, it was just amazing. I had a great time reading this. It was very stylistic. Uh, the colors were popping. So, um, you know, you know. Uh, shout out to his colorist as well. Um, but uh, Sam, the his pencil pencil work on this uh, reminds me a lot of another person that's gonna be later on this list. I'm gonna mention them later. They have similar art styles. At first, I thought that was him, but then when I uh, finally got uh, mostly number one, it wasn't. Uh, but I wasn't disappointed about it. But it was it. Sam did an excellent job on mostly great artwork. Um, and I really appreciate his style. Um, the next one is uh, Carlos Villa. He draws the current volume of the Avengers. Um, everybody looks amazing to me. Uh, from Black Panther, uh, Captain Marvel, Iron Man, Cap, uh, Captain America. They they all look 
amazing. And as the pencil work on here is, is immaculate. Um, I really love the detail that he puts into his, um, to the fight scenes and things of that nature. Um, once again, I want to make sure I keep at least a top 10-ish list. If there was a top 11, he would definitely be in there. Hands down, without a doubt. Carlos, you did an excellent job on the Avengers. Uh, appreciate the, the, the detailed work that you've done and made the pages uh, come out uh, come out uh, alive. So, now, I'm going to do a top 10. These are top 10, but they're not in any order. You know, uh, these are the top 10 artists that I, they made me really enjoy the book. Nothing against the honorable mentions. Like I said, they barely just missed it. Literally barely missed it. I could have just made a top um, 15, 20 of artists because it's going to be a top 20 of writers in the next video. There's so many good writers last year. But anyways, we'll stick to artists. Um, so I'm going to start from 10. I'm going to work my way up to uh, number one. Like I said, it's not in any order. These just these these artists are uh, in my top 10. Okay. So number 10, I have Cortland L. Ellis. Um, he's the artist on Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer. At first, when I first opened the pages and I flipped through issue number one, I said, why is all these negative spaces in this book? Why they can why couldn't the artist do something with all this negative space. As I kept reading uh, Harriet Tubman, uh, Demon Slater, it got better and better. The artwork has been phenomenal. Fight scenes with Harriet Tubman and the vampires is just amazing. Um, if you have not uh, yet read this book, I'm sure you could find, uh, I don't know if the trade is out yet or not, but I know the flop is still at the LCS's because I know my LCS still has, uh, I think on issue three or four now. And I know my LCS has all of them. Um, so, uh, advice, go ahead and pick pick up Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer. Number nine. Number nine and number eight. I just want to say both of these for, on this list for the same reason. The way both of these books portray gore. I'm going to go with number nine first, which is Nick Klein in The Incredible Hulk. Uh, the, the gore, how the, you know, uh, how the Hulk comes out of Bruce Banner, you just like, oh, oh, no, wait, 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 no, no. And then you watch, you're like, oh, oh, that's not, that's not right. The way he, the way he um, uh, draws the, uh, the other monsters and, and things of that nature, and you watch them, it's, it's something intense. And I, and I enjoyed it though. Like, I need that. I need that, that bit of, um, that bit of, art style in it the, the little gore the gore in it and and you know when you when a, when a man transform trans you know transition over to becoming a monster it's not supposed to be like a quick fix or nothing like that the way he drew it made me really appreciate the transition from bruce banner to the incredible hulk so big ups to nick klein i appreciate your artwork my dude uh so the next one is corey smith he is the artist for Ghost Rider. Same thing. If you read the first 10 issues of Ghost Rider, my God, you talking about a transition from, you know, John uh, John Blaze to um, uh, Ghost Rider. Oh my God. Like, in the part when he, uh, he had like a little, uh, what you call it, an invasion of his of his body like something was like in his body that wolverine had to cut out my god that scene alone no sir no sir that is but it was it was good it, it even though it may sound like i'm not liking it but i the fact that i'm not liking it and i still liked it if you know what i mean you know what i mean it's it was it was good like i like after the first couple issue of ghost rider I literally like call my LCS. Yeah, put that book on my pull list. I'm gonna make sure I get this every month. So Corey Smith, you did it also an excellent job. Next book at number seven is John J. Hill, uh, Kill Your Darlings. Um, this book was actually recommended by uh, another YouTuber named Pokan Joe. He recommended this um, book 
to to the masses and i was like okay i'm gonna i'll pick it up you know i didn't even get the cover a i'm normally i'm a cover a kind of guy but i picked up cover i think it's cover b or c it's an awesome cover um and when i bought kill your darlings i read through it it was it was amazing uh the artwork was was it was what's awesome about it is like it's based on a, a child's imagination so you'll see like the stuffed animals that came to life and things of that nature and then you'll see the real life and it basically almost it's almost seamless like it looks amazing you can tell the difference between one world to the next um but it's but it's the way he's way that uh john hill drew it it was great i really do appreciate it so that was john hill kill your darlings check that book out that book is not only it's like four maybe five issues in right now um trust me i have i've been excited uh, every time i pick up this book next we have is i want to say is kari randolph if i mispronounce your name uh, mr randolph i do apologize but the book that he draws is sirens of the city i love the fact that they do the grays and then the only time you see real color is when you see the different factions of the book so you might see somebody wearing off that is um, supposed to be red you see like whatever outfit or whatever piece of the clothing is red is going to be red blues same thing and when they display their powers same thing they put the pop of color but the way that mr randolph draws the fat the fight scenes in this one as well it, I, I love it. It is it, very dynamic. The, uh, the, 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 they're not like in fight poses. It looks very realistic as far as comic book goes. Okay, it's not gonna be like I'm not gonna you ain't gonna flip through the pages like oh my god this is real life. No, but comp, way use your comic book vision. When you see it, you're gonna love it. Um, it I feel that Sirens of the City it was a very under the radar type of book. And you might see this title again in my uh, top, uh, 20, uh, 2023 comic books. So keep out for that. It's going to be, this is part one. I know I'm doing it in a weird time in the video, but this is part one. Uh, part two is going to be the writers. Part three is going to be the books. So you might see this, this book in part three. Let me tell you, I enjoy this book immensely not only based off of the writing for it the writing was phenomenal but the way the artwork is when they showed it like i said the two factions um, i don't get dwell too deep in what the sign of the city is about i might do that in part three um like i said this book might be in it if it is you'll get more information um next one is uh number five is jorge jimenez on batman you sir Mwah. just immaculate i like the way you draw batman i like the way you draw his his rose gallery um you did an excellent job in that um i can't say anything negative about it um i really do appreciate um the art style in it everything it pops in there batman looks good the gotham city looks great um you, you didn't really like you know have have do it like oh i want to make the characters pop but not the background um so i really do appreciate you on that one Jorge. um so number four you heard me talk about sam um lofty and mosley number four on the list this is what his artwork reminds me of it reminds me of daniel warren johnson and you know why i got him on here this is for transformers as it, i am in my 40s actually my birthday is this month um so as a kid, I grew up watching the Transformers cartoon show. One of my fa my all-time favorite animated cartoon will be and forever will be 1986 Transformers the movie. Yes, I did cry when Optimus Prime passed away. Spoilers. And that movie, the the soundtrack, we ain't gonna talk about. I'm mean, I don't be derailing from the comic books, but I have to say this. Transformers, the movie 1986, the soundtracks, the soundtrack for that movie was phenomenal. Okay. So back to Dane Warren Johnson. 
I've been a huge fan of his ever since he did do a power bomb and then he did Beta Ray Bill. I think it's the other way around. He did Beta Ray Bill first and then do a power bomb. Huge fan of his. A huge fan of his artwork. It's just so it's so dynamic. It's, it's it, you, I can feel the emotion when he when he draw when he drew Optimus Prime and all these wonderful Transformer uh, characters and even a human element of this book is is phenomenal. How the way he captures the emotion of these uh, of each one of these supporting characters. So Dane Warren Johnson, one of these days, one of these days, I doubt you ever watch this video. Uh, but if you are listening to this video, one of these days, I will meet you in person and shake your hand and tell you that you're doing a phenomenal job. So the next person, this book caught me off guard. Well, dang, I want to say the, the cover of it, when I first saw the cover of it months ago, I said I was interested. But when I saw the inside pages for the first time, I tried to, I, I tried to stay away from uh I try to stay away from, you know, internet showing pages of the upcoming books, you know, previews of it, because I want to sit down and open a book and then feel the first experiences of it. So for this next book, um, like I said, I want to destroy his name. Uh, is it Matia De Lewis? Um, he's the artist for the call. Oh my God! When I open up this, when I open up this book, the pages of the book is. Oh my god, it's, 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 it's realistic to me. It looks freaking phenomenal. The colors pop, the emotions, you can just see the emotions um, of these characters. This, it, it just, everything looks great. The, the monsters that the monsters that he create in this looks phenomenal. I mean, I know I use that word a lot, but I'm sorry, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, the, the monsters look terrifying. Even the cute ones, you look at them like, okay, you're cute and all, but no, I don't want to get you, do, get you, have you too close to me. I don't want you to get too close to me. So, um, Mr. Day Lewis, um, like I said, you did a phenomenal job on the call. I'm that's, that's still a part of my pull list. Um, there's another book that you might see in part three. Uh, if you get a chance, check that book out. It's not that many. It's not that many issues in, um, and it, it did a, a great job. Number two, number one, number two. Like I said, they're not in any order. They're not in any order. Not in any. Okay, number two. I have Jamal Campbell and Superman. Jamal Campbell, my God. Now I know I'm late. I'm late to the game with him. I'm late to the game with him. This is my first time really experiencing or having knowledge of him on a book. His work on Superman, you so. I'm high fiving you. I might even give you a hug, as long as you know you don't call the cops on. Your artwork in Superman is just amazing, immaculate. I, I really do appreciate how well um, your artwork is in that book. So, big ups to you, sir. I mean, every page from your your the the, the new character uh, creations. Uh, from the new villains that we see in this in this title, you did an amazing job on it, and I and I'm honestly you you up there with like one of my favorite artists of all time now. So I get now I gotta go back and look through the histories of what books you've done, so I can also have that part of my collection. You sir are a gem. Last but I know certainly not least, I know some people. That then my comic book community probably said, Why you have to mention this person's name? This person did has been doing like knocking out the park on so many good titles. His it, excuse me, his name is Dan Mora. He, he does Batman Superman World's Finest. Wow, a 
like the way he draws Batman and Superman uh, takes me back in time when I was a young man and I wasn't always really a big DC fan, but I knew the big two. Like, you know, I knew the big two, Batman and Superman, I knew those guys. Like you can, you can, you know, you see the, the emblems the sh on, the, on the chest. Yes, I know that's Batman. Yes, I know that's Superman. The way he draws these two characters is phenomenal. I really appreciate uh, the way he does this artwork. Like I said, take me back in time when I was, when I was watching the Batman cartoons and, and the Superman cartoons. And it just got that old school feel to it uh, that's missing, to, that I feel that's missing in today's comic books. Uh, and, and the way he draws the action scenes, you could tell though that the power of Superman, the slickness of Batman, uh, Damora, you are seriously also a gem in the comic book community. If I see you, I will not only shake your hand, I will, I'll, not only will I shake your hand, I will give you a hug, maybe even a peck on the cheek, if you allow me to. So. These are my top 10 artists with some honorable mentions. Uh, in the comment section below, let me know some, what are some of your top 10 artists uh, that you had fell in love with in 2023. Now, there's probably a ton of other artists that I probably have in my list, but both all these lists are based off books that aren't in my that in my poll list. Okay? And if it's not in my poll list, I'm sorry. They maybe will be there for when I do this again later on in 2024. But um, right now, I'm just basing on books that I've read on a consistent basis, uh, books I have in my poll list um, in 2023. So if you, like I say, you don't see them, mention some artists. I might check them out for 2024. Uh, name some artists that you fell in love with uh, down, down below. Now, like I said, um, there will be some more news in part three after I do talk about my uh, my top uh, 10 uh, comic books in my pull list uh, for 2023. And there's gonna be some news there. There's gonna be some uh, updates on what my channel is gonna be about, okay? And so I wanna thank everybody. I want y'all to have a great New Year's. Um, enjoy your time with your family and friends. Uh, make sure y'all be safe. And don't forget, and always, happy collecting. Peace.